Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we are on to understanding our classical model of output and employment. This slide carries a quick recap of what we have already studied. So we have production function here, which is a functional relationship between output and input. And we have labor demand here. Labor demand is a positive function of real wage. Then we have labor supply, which again is a positive function. Sorry, labor demand is a negative function of real wage and labor supply is a positive function of real wage. What this thing is, I'm sure you people already know. Okay, so there is no, not going to be further explanation here. Labor market equilibrium will be where we have equality between labor demand and labor supply. That's it. Now, this thing is something new and we're going to go into detail of this. So, here we have written that output, labor and real wage, they are designated as endogenous variable. And what are endogenous variables? So, we have two things here, endogenous and exogenous variable. If we, if you people on your own read this thing, sli this slide with patience, you're going to have a fair bit of idea what these terms are, okay? So, I will be reading this thing here and now, and after that, we're going to check the variables that we have been talking since we began a lecture are they endogenous or exogenous okay so let's just read it with patience first of all if the variables are internal and form an integral part of the system they are called endogenous variables all right so what we have studied here is if the variables are part of the model they are endogenous variables okay next if the variables are external to the system, they are considered as exogenous variables. Alright, this is quite self-explanatory. Next, the exogenous variables come from the outside the model and serve as the model's input. This thing is quite important. That exogenous variable, they are model's input. Okay, whereas endogenous variables are determined within the model and are the model's output. So just memorize exogenous variables are model's input, endogenous variables are model's output. Okay. And next we have dependent variables are always endogenous variables. Okay. So we got certain things here that endogenous variables are within the system, they serve as model's output, exogenous are what comes from outside the model and they are model's input. Further endogenous are dependent variables. Okay. Now the last line is exogenous variables may be either non-economic or economic and are determined independently by the system. Okay. And the last line is there is no hard and fast line of demarcation between these variables. You can ignore this line because we don't really need to go into this thing as of now. We're going to be talking about some growth models. Then we'll see that technology can be endogenous variable or exogenous variable. But let's just not go no go into that thing right now okay so we got idea of what these variables are now we're gonna see how they actually fit into our model so here in this slide i have written that endogenous variable like output employment real wage okay let's just check if these variables are into the definition of endogenous variables let's just talk about output first output is it endogenous variable yes why so because output is a output of our model it is a result of our model output is something that is coming out of our model it's not acting as an input here right also it is dependent yeah endogenous variables are always dependent and output is dependent upon labor market equilibrium okay employment again employment is a dependent variable because it is dependent upon labor supply and labor demand in the classical model everything is supply determined so in this particular case, it is dependent upon labor supply. But let's just not go into the supply side, economics right now. We will talk about this thing also. But right now, just think about the logic here that yes, employment, it is a dependent variable because labor supply and labor demand is determining the level of employment. Also, it is an output as it is a result of our model. Okay, same goes with the real wage. All right, now we are on to exogenous variable. So let's just take an example of population. Population is an economic variable or non-economic? It's a non-economic variable and we have already studied that exogenous variables can either be economic or non-economic. All right. Is it an input or output? It is an input and we'll see how population is an input. It's not an explicit input, but it does help us in 
fixing the position of labor supply curve but we will get into the details of this so don't worry so population is fitting into the statements that we have studied in our previous lecture that previous slide that yes population is non-economic further it is acting as an input and also it is something which is outside of model it's not within the model nowhere in our model we're gonna mention population okay the way we're gonna mention labor real wage or output all right same goes with technological invention and innovations okay now we are on to determination of equilibrium level of out employment and output so this is quite simple it is simple because we have taken a lot of time in understanding all these things already or beforehand so as not to get confused here so we have supply of labor curve we have labor demand curve and we know why this is upward sloping and why is it downward sloping and their intersection gonna determine the equilibrium level of employment which in this case turns out to be n0 and real wage turns out to be w upon p0 okay and on to the downward side we have employment on x-axis and output and y-axis and this is just a production function and their intersection gonna determine the equilibrium level of output and why the production sh function has this particular shape because we've already studied this thing that initially we, we witness constant returns to scale so this is a con this is a plain line here a straight line here then we're gonna witness diminishing returns to scale so we're gonna see this particular shape and then we're gonna see negative returns to scale if we keep on extending this line further now we're gonna have it have this shape coming downwards that output going down from y0 to somewhere say y1 so this particular shape is because of law of, sorry law of diminishing marginal returns okay and again observe this figure carefully because we're gonna be doing things with this figure only we're gonna show how population gonna change the supply curve how changes in technology gonna bring a shift in production function and so is the shift in marginal productivity of labor so we ought to have a thorough understanding of how we came into this particular case how we got here how why is the marginal product of labor curve has this particular shape why is the say, labor supply curve has this particular shape why is the production function has this, has this shape okay so watch the videos with patience if you haven't gone through the previous lectures do watch them if not interested in watching it's all right but do read the Freud. okay so don't jump through the chapters of Freud. we need to read that book cover to cover okay so this is it for now in the next lecture we'll see how this labor market equilibrium gonna be determined if we just keep it at take it as a function of money wage okay we'll talk about it in next lecture all right then thank you so much for watching this videos friends and if you think these videos are helping you in any way you can share it with your friends okay thank you so much once again goodbye